my 100 Days of Happiness. <laughs> my Facebook post today. Oh, yeah. I get to spend time with you. That makes me happy. Yeah. So I, I have to say, Cheryl, I was inspired by uh, what has happened with you. And I was deeply influenced by my own experience this uh, past week in that uh, when I came back from uh, Denver, I knew that I was going to be in, uh, uh, in allergy season. I don't like allergy season. I sneeze. So I went off and bought, before I left Denver, I went off and bought some over-the-counter, uh, I'm not going to say the name, there's no sense in influencing you with that, but I bought some stuff, and it seemed to be working fine, and Sunday was my fifth day of taking it. And you may not have noticed, but I noticed that I misspoke up here three times last week. And it bugged me. And then after the celebration, uh, we had uh, the, the grounds and gardening group meeting, and I was part of that meeting, and we went off around the property, and I said, I'm going to go change clothes, and I couldn't come back outside. I just didn't feel right. And when it took us the rest of the day, but Barbara and I figured out, it was that thing I was taking. I don't want to take it anymore, so I stopped taking it. And it, it sent me off on this whole thought about how we take medications and how that's built into our culture. So I thought I'd talk about something that really fits perfectly into our philosophy, and that, the placebo effect. Any, anyone here never heard of the placebo effect? Anyone? We all know what that is, right? It's this idea that you take a pill that has nothing in it that's going to fix anything, but you feel better, right? Hmm, interesting concept. So I want to share some things about the placebo effect with you today um, so, that, so that we can look at this thing from a metaphysical standpoint. First of all, let me explain that the word comes from the Latin. Uh, it, was, it was a word that was created in the 1700s, and it came from the word placere, which is Latin for I shall please or to please. The idea of it is, is that if a doctor we give great power to, in our culture and probably anywhere in the world, gives you something, you doggone better feel good, right? To please that person, because that's kind of what we put, we put our, our medical people up on, on pedestals, that's been around for, for ages, and we want to do what they tell us is going to happen. That's the placebo effect, but it's really much, much more than that. So that's the kind of stuff I want to share with you. Someone that doesn't like the placebo effect are pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> it messes up their research. For example, uh, if they do a, a double-blind study, meaning they have a control group and a, and a test group, and they give the control group the placebo, the nothing pill, and they give the test group their wonderful medicine that they're developing, the placebo group has an improvement of 30%. And the, and the test group has an improvement of 46%. That means that, that, that you can pretty much figure that 16% of the people that take that pill are actually helped by it. It's a great success, though, according to the statistics and the way that that in the industry works. Is a 16% above the placebo level obviously has great, great uh, value to them and says that they've got a successful uh, pharmaceutical. One thing that I, in my research I found was is that success in any drug is based on the, on the ability of it not to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> or have, you know, totally horrible side effects. That's the first thing they, that the government looks at, the FDA looks at, is how, how not bad for you is it. So once we get over that, then they look at how effective it is beyond that. So that's how it works. Now, you know, it sounds like I'm, I'm picking on uh, the, the medical profession, and I am grateful for the medical profession. I am grateful that there are people that seek to figure out how to help us live our lives more comfortably and to move through things that have killed people in past generations. Enormous uh, numbers of deaths, plagues, and, and horrible situations. And, and I want to say the medical industry has helped with that. But this idea of a placebo is fascinating to me. And I did a little research this week, and I'm going to share it. I'm going to have to, I have to do this in order because we have slides. And, and the fact that I've digressed so much into some of this, I just want to make sure we're all clear that the idea here is, is to study an effect, not to make anybody or anything wrong. Simply to look at the possibilities here. So I want to begin with a, a fact of research. The researchers 
find that there are cultural aspects and effects of placebo. <laughs> According to researchers, Americans tend to exhibit more hypochondria that's worrying about being seriously ill than any other society on Earth. This is thought to be influenced by our constant, constant bombardment of medication advertising on TV and in print. But it's not just Americans. For some reason, uh, even in Europe, uh, there have been tests done on placebos, and they found that in Germany, trials on, on ulcer medication uh, is more effective in Germany than it is in Brazil. <laughs> However, all their attempts to deal with hypertension, hypertension in Germany have failed with placebos. The Germans want their hypertension, <laughs> and they're not willing to let it go. Cultural effects all over the, of the world were placebos create differences in different cultures. The next one, placebos appear to outperform antidepressants. Not, that obviously is a depressing view, but the truth is, is that many uh, Americans, in particular, <laughs> suffer from depression, and that uh, there are an inordinate number of antidepressant drugs that are offered in, in this country. It makes pharmaceutical companies billions of dollars. When they research the, the antidepressants against placebos, the placebos match them. I know that's a little freaky, and, and the pharmaceutical companies don't want you to know this, but actually it makes the, the placebos perform, outperform them, because they don't have the side effects. Hmm. But still understand, we're talking about placebos, and that's where the doctor gives you the pill and says, take this pill, you'll feel better. So what do you do? You do what the doctor said, right? The prescription goes all the way to the feeling bed. Interesting how that works. There have been a number of high-level high studies on depression, and, and they know for a fact that they don't produce any of the side effects, except in certain cases, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, so we're downplaying this from a, from a popular standpoint because uh, doing, doing uh, antidepression without drugs could just wreck the whole industry. Okay, this is an interesting one. You can actually get yourself drunk on placebos. Two studies I want to cite on this one. One at Princeton University, where they had a, a, a cake party. They had this major cake party, and all of the beer was non-alcoholic. And then they filmed it. They, they video recorded it, and what they, re what they observed was high levels of, of uh, displaying uh, out of control behavior uh, and, and, uh, and, si and strong signs of inebriation. Another study, they gave a group of people in a social setting vodka cocktails. Vodka cocktails that were actually just tonic water and lime. Everyone at the party showed, dis uh, showed impaired judgment. They actually gave them written and motor skill tests and they all failed. So it's not just college students. If you think you're getting drunk, you're getting drunk. Next one. Placebo has an evil twin named Nocebo. Here's how this one works. You take a, a, a drug, a placebo drug, not, nothing in it, and the doctor gives you the list of things that are side effects. So what do you experience? Side the side effects. The more you know about the side effects of a drug, the higher chance is that you're going to experience the stomach pains or whatever else it is that they say might be, might be a, a side effect. Have you listened to the, to the drug commercials on TV where in a very monotone, low, very fast voice, they list all the things that could go wrong? Some of them actually see death. So talk to your doctor about taking this drug. Give me a placebo anytime. <laughs> Get rid of this guy. <laughs> it's true. The pharmaceutical companies that make drugs for humans also make drugs for animals. So they test them. Now, of course, the idea of doing double-blind studies with dogs seems a little absurd. But here's, here's the interesting piece. If you're doing a double-blind study, 
and you're using placebos, half of the subjects, dogs, are getting nothing, right? And the other half are getting the drug. But who's giving them the drug? They're people. They're people that love them and want them to be better. So what happens? Yeah, well, in a particular study uh, that involved, let's see, uh, epilepsy in canines, the placebo absolutely matched the effectiveness of the drugs. So you give your dog a pill, and you love your dog, and you want your dog to be better. Your dog's going to be better for you. How about you? Isn't that interesting? I've sat around here for years. You treat for your animals, and they respond better than, than other people do. Because they really want to please you. The placebo effect. Let's see what the next one is. Ah, oh, yeah. This is it. This, this one's just the weirdest one. The entire premise of placebos is that you don't know. You think it's the drug. So you take the pill and you feel better, right? Well, in every case where it's done as a study, the, the subjects are told that they've been taking a placebo. And what do they want? They want to keep taking it. Please give me more of those placebos, because I'm feeling wonderful. Isn't that bizarre? There's absolutely no scientific evidence that that should exist at all. Except that you took the pill, and you got the result, and you better not change what you're doing because it's working. Huh, how about that? Here's, I think, my favorite. The color of the placebo pill that you take affects how it works. <laughs> now, maybe not you, but everybody else. We as humans are profoundly affected by color, and we have a subconscious relationship with the colors of the things we put in our mouths. You know, I walk around with one of those smoothies that Barbara makes. It tastes like cherries and blueberries. It's delicious, but it's got spinach in it, so it's green. And I'll go, want to taste it? And nobody says yes, because it's green. And that just looks awful. Did it to you on Saturday, didn't I? Yeah. yeah, nobody wants to taste it. It's delicious. It doesn't have the taste of spinach at all. Yet it looks awful, so people won't taste it. So here's the deal. Researchers have learned that depression is most effectively treated with a yellow pill. The patients become more alert and awake when they take a red pill. The people who will have less anxiety if they take a green pill. The stomach issues like ulcers are seen out in people who take a white pill. Placebo pills taken four times a day are more effective than placebo pills taken two times a day. <laughs> Placebos that have a brand name written on them are more effective than ones that don't have a name written on them. <laughs> Here's one. Placebo surgeries are also effective in curing injuries. This has really been done. It's been checked out. Someone has some kind of a joint or a bone uh, injury. They go to a doctor to get this fixed. The doctor makes an incision, sews it back up. The person comes out of their surgery. They're told it was an absolute success. We'll monitor their improvement over time compared to people who actually had the surgery, the same result. By, by the time a month has passed, there's no pain, and whatever the malady was inside is gone. It's the placebo effect. It's the same exact thing. Isn't that bizarre? Actually makes you wonder at some point, uh, fake surgery might be a, a preferred insurance methodology for, for dealing with, with injuries. <laughs> And this final one, we find out that uh, the placebos uh, that have been around, that have been identified since the 1700s, but not studied until the 1970s, once we started studying them, they actually have become more powerful. We are more influenced by these factors today than we were 40 years ago. So what is the point of this? What is it that I want you to know by sharing this idea of a placebo effect? This, the placebo effect, this big issue in pharmacology and in medicine, is what we teach. It's the science of mind. It's the fact that if you think it, it is so. And if you think it is not, it's going to take you a long time to get there. It's the whole idea that we are the ones creating our experience. We're being influenced by outside things, which we are all the time anyway, 
But once, what's happening is, is that we are believing the hype that we're hearing. We're believing the information that we're being given, so we act accordingly, and our bodies, our physiology acts accordingly. This is how we deal with life. If it's true in medicine with placebos, it's true everywhere else in your life. So what is it that you're believing? What is it that you're counting on? Are you focused on your problems? Or are you focused on having the very fullest, richest possible, most wonderful life you could ever imagine? Whatever you're seeing as your life is what you're getting. You're being influenced by life because you are dealing at the level of effect. We all do it. But the idea is we want to function in life from that place of spirit, from that place of being in charge of our lives, in that place of dominion, in that place of us saying what we are and who we are. So here's what I like to do around the idea of medicine. Let's see how this applies every world in our lives. I go to doctors. I believe that they are good people wanting to do the best they can to help us. They have information, but they are not me. So I go to a doctor and they give me information and then I act according to what's best for me and my understanding of my life. I don't give my power away to my doctors like I watched my mom do. I use them as a resource and then I choose. I remember once when we were living out in Fairview, I was working on, on a, a wall and I had a box cut and I, I slipped and that box cutter went right through my hand, opened it wide up. I uh, slapped a, a towel over it. Barbara said, let's go to the, to the hospital or the urgent care. And we got in the car and we drove about two blocks and I said, stop. She said, what? I said, go home. She said, what? I said, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm fine. I saw your hand is wide open. I'm not going to the doctor. I'm fine. We went home. And I prayed over that hand. I knew that hand was fine. And the next morning when I woke up, there was a line there, but there was no cut. It had completely healed. We can do this all the time. What Cheryl talked about, she had people all over this community treating her, knowing the truth about her, and then her doctor says there's been a spontaneous healing. This drip that's been going on for, I don't know, 13, 15 years stopped. What do you think it stopped about? It stopped because people saw her as healthy. And she was forced to see herself as healthy too. And guess what? She's healthy. the rest of us don't have. We are in community, so we have each other. We have the ability to support and believe and hold up one another. That's powerful stuff. We are here to support one another, but we are here also to demonstrate the power of mind. So let's live with the placebo effect. Let's, let's embrace it. Let's let it work. But let it work everywhere, in every part of your life. If you need to, go get some, some pills that are empty, and every time you need something in your life, pick up one of those empty cartridges and say, this will cure my blah, blah, blah. And take the damn pill and stop doing it that old way. It doesn't matter how you do it. The idea is let's get to a place where we know who's in charge of our lives. We are. We are the presence of the divine. We are the ones that are creating a new world. We're on the edge of it, folks. And what we do here and what we do around the world is making a difference because we know who we are. You agree? Yes. I love you. Thank you.